The purpose of this video is to talk a bit about karyotypes. Now, a karyotype is an image that will be used by a geneticist to study the chromosomes of an individual. So the one that we're looking at here is a human karyotype, and the way geneticists make these is they have to isolate cells that are going through the process of mitosis, and during that process, the DNA is condensed down into the form of chromosomes. So what the scientist ends up doing then is isolating the individual chromosomes, and they pair them up according to their banding pattern. So if we take a look at this one, the way that scientists go through and pair these up is based on the size of the chromosome and the order of the banding. And that banding really represents areas of more dense genetic material where some of the genes are located. So if we go through this one, since it's a human karyotype, humans have 46 chromosomes. So you actually end up with 23 pairs of chromosomes. And what you can see as we go through and we number these is that as you go down in number, or I guess I should say up in number, uh, then the size of each chromosome is going to decrease. So we number them in order from largest to smallest. Now if you notice as we're coming up on this here at the end, I told you there's 23 pairs of chromosomes. We do not number the last one. Uh, the last pair is the pair that determines gender. This one happens to be a male karyotype. So we'll go with an X and a Y chromosome here. And uh, the way that you can tell that is based on the size of the chromosomes. So if we look at these two, the X chromosome is far larger than the Y chromosome. This is one of the reasons why men are more likely to have certain genetic disorders that are passed on on the X chromosome than women are. So things like colorblindness and hemophilia are much more likely to occur in men because men only get one copy of the X chromosome. So if there's a genetic disorder that's passed on on the traits that they have on that chromosome, they're sort of out of luck and they're stuck with that. Whereas women, in order to have colorblindness or hemophilia or any other X-linked trait like that, they would need to have it on both of their X chromosomes. So a woman's karyotype would look different. Instead of having one large chromosome and one small one, they would have two of the X chromosomes. So effectively, they get two chances to get each of those good genes. So it's not that it's impossible for a woman to have hemophilia or colorblindness. It's just far less likely than it is for males because males only get one of each of those chromosomes. So it's ultimately the banding pattern and the size of the chromosomes that allows the geneticist to go through and pair all of these up. The last thing we have to talk about is what happens if you get the wrong number of one of these. And really, the answer is it depends, but it almost always results in a genetic disorder. If you were to, say, get an extra copy, or maybe you were missing a copy of chromosome 2, uh, that would be a very significant disruption to the organism. Most of the time what you see with many of the larger chromosomes, if there's a chromosomal disorder, meaning the person either got an extra one or they're missing one, uh, then that's usually fairly significant, and something like that will typically cause major problems in the individual. So if uh, an individual were to have that, if that was the case, right, if they had um, a chromosomal disorder, then what you'd probably see is that they wouldn't develop correctly in the womb. So that would become a, a serious issue for that person. Uh, another example of one that's maybe more common because it involves a chromosome that's smaller is if we look at chromosome 21 for a moment. So down here, uh, chromosome 21 will sometimes involve a, a chromosomal mutation where someone gets three of them instead of just two. So you've actually probably heard of this. It's a disorder called Down syndrome. The technical name for it is trisomy 21. So trisomy tells us there are three chromosomes instead of just the typical number of two. So something like that is occurring on a relatively smaller chromosome. And so it's generally less disruptive to the organism than if there was a mutation on a much larger chromosome. So we'll move this out of the way for a second and talk about the final term for this video. The idea of an individual getting the improper number of chromosomes is an issue called non-disjunction. So what happens is during the process of meiosis, when the cells that are being produced that are going to make this new individual, there's usually some kind of a mistake that's going on between metaphase and anaphase, where typically either the homologous pairs of chromosomes would pull apart in those tetrad groups, so those tetrads would no longer be together, so that would be going between 
mitosis 1 and then, anaf I'm sorry, um, metaphase 1 and anaphase 1. Or uh, it could potentially be a problem that happens later on during metaphase 2 and anaphase 2. But somewhere along the way, the chromosomes do not pull apart correctly. So you end up with one cell that gets an extra chromosome and then one cell that is missing a chromosome. So this idea of the chromosomes not pulling apart correctly between metaphase and anaphase are the things that cause this issue of non-disjunction in the organism. So I hope this video helped for you to understand a bit more about karyotypes, and I appreciate you watching.